Today we're going to be talking about the Bandai Premium Kaiju Bengaichi Godzilla 1954 Poster Color Version. This lovely lad was released in October of 2019 to coincide with Godzilla's then 65th anniversary, and was sadly one of the many releases coming out at the time that I had to say no to. For any whom's to remember, I was moving around that time, didn't know what address to put or if it would even show up in time, so I passed on this thing and the prices only rose. But thankfully, with the help of Mandarake, I was finally able to acquire one and just look at the back piece of this box, man! It's awesome! So I bet you're all Google gazing towards this little doodle over here with the name Sadao Izuka. Now for those who don't know, Izuka is kind of the jack of all trades. He did special effects in the original Godzilla and a few other Showa era Godzilla films. He did the optical photography in Mothra vs. Godzilla and Invasion of the Astro Monster. He did visual effects in a movie that I've never seen before and I'm rather upset about. And he's an effects animator plus author. This guy's kind of done it all. So if I had to guess, I think he had something to do with this mural on the back of the box over here. I could be wrong, but given the guy's track record, this seems like something he would do. Moving on with the box, here is the right side, here is the left side, here is the top, here is the bottom. Here's a bunch of stuff that my uncultured self can't read other than Gachapon and Godzilla, Godzilla 2019 and a scanny wanny. And here uh, is the front of the box, and I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you did, as long as as you like this video. The front of this box is honestly just beautiful. It's got everything you need to know. Googly Eye, Gojira, 1954, Bandai, Toho, Godzilla, 65 years of Godzilla, 1954 through 2019. You got the whole heckin' Ishka Bibble right here. It looks like I got a boom box now. Boom box, boom box, boom box. Okay, I think we can all admit that was stupid. But anyway, let's start taking a look at this figure. Ha! Huh. JK, we're gonna be talking about the tag. And even though this not being attached to the figure is a cardinal sin against Shinra Jirism, I will say that this tag is honestly really, really nice looking. I like that it's mostly white with the different colored text. It reminds me a lot of the Godzilla collection tags that were coming out with those figures. And the back of the thing is a little bit on the bland side, but again, I actually kind of really like the minimalistic take on these. I just so wish it was still attached to the fig here. But coincidentally, looks pretty dang good sitting next to the figure as well. A solid star for paint, a solid star for detail. Do wish it was still attached to the figure, but hey, what happens, happens. Let's take a look at this figure. Holy mother of a yes. Look at this thing. It's, oh, oh, oh my god, oh, dude. Gonna be unsaintly and just talk about the dorsal fins first because Jesus, tap dancing Gojira sandwiches. What? The detail on these things is just fantastic and I love the clashing of the browns and this really opaque grayish white going on over here. It really does look awesome. Again, detail is absolutely praiseworthy, but you know what else is praiseworthy? They painted the dorsal fins all the way to the tip of the tail. Amazing that we have to pay 6,000 yen, which is almost $60, to get something that Bandai had been doing well into the early 2000s. Why? But you know what? I'm not going to complain about that. I do find it a little weird how this uh, little tinge of brown kind of just ends mid-tail. Though it kind of is a movie monster series release. But something I just love about this figure is just that the base color is so dark, but they've added so many different tinges of brown to this figure. Like we've got lighter and darker browns along the thighs over here, on the goji crotch, chest, and thighs. It's all just really, really good. Although we do have a few splooches of red paint. We'll get to that in a second. And I really need to comment on how both sides of the claws are painted on this thing. Something that doesn't really happen when it comes to movie monster series releases these days, which is unfortunate. But forget about all that. Just look at all the amazing detail on this thing, man. oof -ah! No matter where your eye estrays to, you're just going to be met with lots of very beautiful paint and beautiful detail. Although I will admit, Godzilla's kneecaps do kind of look like meat Balls. Meat ball, meat ball, spaghetti underneath. But enough about all that linguine and meat sphere stuff. Look at the feet over here. Very gnarly, very nicely done, and I love that the toes are painted up as well. And look at that, the toes are even painted on the bottom. Both feet get this legendary treatment. Also copyright. It's really, really hard to just look at this figure and just say, oh yeah, that looks just fine. 
because with the different tinges of browns and a little bit of grays here and there, the thing is an absolute cornucopia of colors. I honestly find it hard to not look at all the different areas on this figure seeing what my eyes can see for the first time. One of those things being I just noticed that the bottom of the tail isn't fully painted. I mean, it doesn't have all the different shades of brown on the bottom side, which honestly is okay. I, I really don't think that's an issue because I don't know how important paint on the bottom of a tail really is, you know? But man, even when you look on the back of Godzilla over here, you can still see amazing detail. He's not flooded with gray or white paint on his back. I mean, yeah, there is a lot more of it because, you know, they got to paint the dorsal fins, but still, it looks great. And the details on the dorsal fins look great too. Look at that. Look at how great that looks. My god. Speaking of dorsal fins moving on up, the dorsal fins even over here moving up to Godzilla's head look pretty fantastic. I do very much like how they kind of trail off into that opaque gray. And looking at the top of Godzilla's head over here, we've got the strong brow, the ears, more spikes, his nose. Really, really great stuff. Now when it comes to the teeth, I don't feel they're painted up too badly. They're a little bit on the messier side, and clearly this is where the red splooches came from. We have this very vibrant red for the inside of Godzilla's mouth and his tongue. I personally feel the paint on the teeth in the front is a little bit weak, especially on the lower jaw over here. But for the most part, I would say that the premium paint on this premium Bandai figure is rather premium. <laughs> okay. Speaking of premium, look at this profile shot of Godzilla. That's like to a T perfect. It's honestly a little on the haunting side as well. Just seeing his eye peering down, it... It always made me feel uncomfortable, even in the movie. And I must give them credit, the application for this pupil is rather fantastic. But alas, all good things must come to an end. Shinra Jira, what are you talking about, man? I'm unfortunately talking about... Ah! Yeah, this is one of those releases that's meant to be posed at an angle, so it looks like this, to which I will say... Yeah, that looks pretty good. Kinda, kinda nice. Kinda sucks when you want to pose him from the front though, which I'm going to be doing because he is going to be in my Bandai vinyl collection. Yeah, I don't know, man. I can't say I'm a fan of this. I'm not a fan of it when Tamashi Nations does it by mistake or just doesn't care to correct it. And I'm not a fan of Bandai Premium doing it either. It's like the figure only really looks good from the side. If you pose him from the front, he's just gonna look like he got kicked in the Gojinards. But I really would like to stress that this is not just on my figure. Figure. This is not a factory error. Upon getting this thing out of the box for the first time and seeing that, I did my research. I looked up a couple of reviews and I can only find two. One from Luminous and one from Atomic Vinyl Reviews. Both of theirs have the exact same issue. But Atomic Vinyl Reviews pointed out an interesting little tidbit. Those eyes aren't painted on that way. They're sculpted on that way as well. Which of course entirely backs the fact that Bandai did this intentionally. And okay, you did it intentionally, but that really doesn't help me like it. You see, it's an entirely different thing when it's an unintentional mistake that a particular company refuses to fix. But doing something like this intentionally, I just don't understand why. It's like in reality, this pose is really only going to work from a particular angle and that's going to be if the figure's above you. Sure, it doesn't look too bad at eye level, but the wonk is starting to show. And then looking down at it, you can just see how weird the pupils are placed. I'm really not a fan of this. I honestly don't have the shelf space to have this guy posed at an angle like so. And while I do admit he does look pretty cool from this, I do have my one other issue there, Bandai. All of the marketing you did for this figure only showed the figure from one side. Yeah, there was the other picture where you showed it from the back, but you didn't show anybody, or apparently you didn't even tell anybody, that we would be getting a Godzilla figure with eyes like that. I don't know, it just comes off really disingenuous and crappy. Like, I really can't put myself in Bandai's shoes where it's like, okay, here's this figure that people are going to have to pose like so in order for it to look good. If you pose it any other way, it's just not going to look as good. And you know, you'd expect a company like Bandai to understand that people are going to be posing their figures from the front as well. So why would you completely overlook such a thing for this? I don't know, man. 
Honestly, this figure is double star worthy since it features no articulation, but I am gonna have to knock that double star to a star and a half solely because of these eyes. It bothers me that much, and I really don't think that's something companies should be doing, let alone doing it for nearly $60 at release. Again, it's a beautiful figure. I love this thing. I love that it's a completely different color from the rest of my 1954 vinyl figures. And standing this guy next to my sepia tone Godzilla 1954 is just awesome. Again, it's really just all in the eyes. That's where the major disappointment comes from. But everything else, this figure is a 10 out of 10, a 5 out of 5, supremium detail, supremium size, and supremium paint. I just really don't like the fact that Bandai really didn't let anybody know about any of this and I really don't like the fact that this is still a practice that goes on today, at least within Bandai's own walls. I really don't get the appeal, I don't get why people make excuses for it. I mean, the same thing happened with the 2014 SH Monster Arts figure and the original Shin Godzilla figure. One eye was going one way, the other was another. Yeah, I don't like it when SHMA do it. I'm not liking that Bandai's doing it. I'm not going to defend it solely because it's a really good looking vinyl figure. This just needs to not happen anymore. But anyway, that's about going to wrap it up here friends and neighbors i just want to take the time to thank my patrons including my two newest patrons kaiju dork and evangelion unit kiryu thanks so much for becoming patrons you guys and for anybody interested i reformatted my patreon page a bit actually a lot. So now if you pledge just $1 a month, you really do just get access to everything. The $2 tier and $5 tier are really just there for people who want to donate a couple extra bucks a month. So if you've ever been interested in my Patreon, but didn't feel like paying two or $5 a month, you can now pay one buck and you get everything. All right, I'm done shilling. Social media, merch, I just did it again. Hope you enjoyed. More regular Godzilla reviews coming soon. And uh, yeah, that's it. Bye.